stop in verse 12 at the word kindness. Amen. We do solicit your prayers, preaching and praying our good friends. They love to hang out with one, with one another and as always share. Uh, we're here today because somebody prayed for us. And since someone prayed for us, and since we are the beneficiaries of the prayers of others, then we are obligated uh, to pray for one another. Amen. Amen. When you get a group of, of people together, wherever there are people, wherever there are groups of individuals who congregate together, not, not always, but uh, sometimes, drama occurs. It's nothing new under the sun. Paul dealt with it. It was in the church at uh, Colossae. There was uh, drama. There were individuals who had complaints worn against another. There were individuals who had uh, problems with forgiving one another. And I looked at this text and I thought that it would be good for us since all of us are familiar with drama. And I think that I'll say that again. Since all of us are familiar with it, if you're not familiar with it, you've seen it. Amen. And if you, uh, you know, haven't uh, in your own household, there are those here, you, you love lifetime dramas. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so we are familiar with it. And so the challenge of these few Sundays is to help us uh, to not just minimize the drama that will be part of it but hopefully it can help us to put a stop it, you know it really should stop with us it, it's just like words in the grapevine and when they make it when the word makes its way toward us uh, then literally the grapevine what was in the grapevine the message that has been diluted since it's been in the grapevine wow it should stop with us. Say amen. Yeah. Well, 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 how do you stop uh, the drama? Well, well first of all, we're, we're going to see, instead of uh, getting all wrapped up in the drama, we're called on, first of all, uh, to, to wrap ourselves up in, in who we are. Say amen. Yeah. That, that's the first thing in our text. We have to wrap ourselves up in who we are. Well, according to the text in verse 12, therefore, as the elect of God, the holy and beloved, well, we are called on to wrap ourselves up in who we are instead of getting all wrapped up, twisted up, and tied up in the drama. We need to wrap ourselves up in who we are. Uh, first of all, God God has elected us. And that word elect means that we are the chosen ones. God, God has chosen uh, us. Uh, amen. He has brought us out of uh, the darkness into his marvelous uh, light. Well, well, that's enough just to stay wrapped up in. When I think about the fact that God gave me a chance, I say that again, since I think and when I dwell on the fact that God gave me a chance, God gave you a chance, a chance to see Jesus and what the Lord could do for us in our lives. And it had not been for the Lord who stopped by and knocked on our door, giving us a chance. Listen, where 
would we be today? And so we wrap ourselves up in who we are. We are the elect of God, the chosen ones. You ought to look at somebody and say, you're so special. And, and, and you're special because the Lord has, uh, yes, uh, given you change. He has elected you, allowed you to become part of his family. Not, not only are we a part of God's elected with respect to who we are, uh, but the word declares uh, that uh, we are holy. And all the word holy means uh, in its base uh, definition, the word holy simply means to be set apart. God called us out of the darkness yeah, yeah. and then set us apart so that he could use us for his glory. Yeah. So instead of getting all wrapped up in the drama and allowing the drama to dictate what I do, what you do, then we're called on to wrap ourselves up in this. Listen, I've been called by God. I'm a holy. I've been set apart to, to be used by him and not to allow others nor what is in the grapevine nor the drama to control me. Amen. Amen. So we're God's elected we wrap ourselves up in who we are with God's elect. We are, we are holy and we are beloved uh, by him. And we just use that word special, but we're the apple of the Lord's eye. Amen. And that's enough for me to wrap myself up in and say, man, knowing that God gave me chance, I'm part of the elected group. You are, again, holy. You have been called out of the darkness, set apart to, to be used by him. So often emotions get all in the way. And, and we forget to, the fact that God has set us apart to, to be used by him and realizing that we are part of the beloved God. God loves us and he, you know the fact that God loves me, knowing that he loves me, it moves me in such a way that there are certain ways that, that I just cannot react or behave because the Lord loves me. He had loves me so much. His love for me has transformed my life. I say that again. There ought to be somebody in here. The love of Christ. Paul shares it over in the book of Corinthians um, that the love of Christ constrains me. That, that there are some things that I just don't do anymore. Why? Because God loves me and because of that I just don't want to treat him. A certain way. Amen. 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 So if we're going to stop the drum First of all, we have to wrap ourselves up in, in who we are. I, I'm not the same person. I wanted to use a the word there, but I'm streaming. Say, man. I'm not the same person I used to be. Amen. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, you're not the same rascal you used to be. Since uh, we've come well, well, first of all, we need to wrap ourselves up in who we are. Uh, then, then secondly, we need to wrap ourselves up in, in, in compassion. Say amen. It's, amen. it's right there. Uh, amen. In, in, in the text, of, uh, Paul declares in verse, uh, verse 12, Therefore, uh, yes, being the elect of God, holy, beloved, he says, put on tender mercies. That, that, that word tender mercies. Mercies uh, that it speaks of and about compassion, uh, how that God had compassion on us. Now, compassion is different uh, from just feeling sorry. We right, can feel, right. oh, I'm just so sorry. We can feel sorry uh, for a person, but it doesn't move us to do much uh, for them. But when you move by compassion. Not only are you sorry, but it moves you to do something about a person's dilemma and their circumstance. And he talks about tender mercies. God was tender to us. He was gentle with us. He's been merciful to us. God was tender with us. He is gentle with us. God has been merciful to us. God has looked beyond over and over 
again our faults and our weaknesses and he ministers unto us in the area of our weak. God is gentle with us. He's not rough with us. God has been merciful toward us and we need to be mindful of that when we are dealing and when we are facing with trauma. Yes, I love the King James version. It declares yes, that we need to allow our bowels of compassion, our bowels of mercy. We need to let that thing flow. Say, man, I, I love it. You know, there's nothing really worse than constipation. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. That, that there's nothing really worse than constipation. Well, it's just better when it flows. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's better when it flows. Well, what the Lord is declaring here, we should not shut up the bowels of our compassion. We should not be hard-hearted. We need to allow the love of God to flow from him, yes, in us, toward others. I think that I'll say that again. We need to allow the love of God, yes, to flow in us, and what is in us ought to flow out toward others. That's why Jesus declares, let your light so shine before men that they might see me, the goodness of God in your heart. I, you know, at the end of the day, I really don't want folk to see me. I want them to see the Jesus in me. I, I want them to see the love of God flowing through me. And what that does, it has an impact upon others and, and it can stop the trauma when they see me. Yes, loving them with the love of God. It can change mindsets. Amen. We need to allow the love of Christ to flow through us. And that's one thing that I love about how the Lord has blessed our fellowship. The Lord has blessed us in such a way where, yes, the, the love of God flows in the, the fellowship. It doesn't matter who comes in the door. You, you allow the love of God to flow, uh, yes, from you toward them. It doesn't matter stream and we allow the love of God, yes, to flow through us toward others. And there are those who are even streaming and who can feel the love of Christ when it is flowing in our hearts. Somebody ought to say thank you. We serve a God who declares whosoever will, let them come. And we should be the type of person, whosoever will, yeah, allow them to come. Allow them to experience the love of Christ, the mercy of God, the gentleness, the compassion of God. I want them to know Jesus, yet yeah, just as like it me. But we wrap ourselves up in compassion. Amen. We wrap ourselves up in who we are. I'm not uh, the same anymore. God's elect been called on to be used by him. Beloved of God, God loves us anyhow. Say anyhow. Amen. Loves you just like you are. And he'll take you right where you are and he will help you to become all that he has designed for you to be. Yeah. And then God, his tender mercies, we wrap ourselves up in his compassion. Amen. I will never be rough with you. I, never, I would never treat you harshly. I would never speak a cross word toward you. Say man, The tender mercies of God. You, you can speak the truth in love. Amen. You can speak the truth in love. And at the end of that interaction, we can all go out. Yeah. And buy a Popeye sandwich. Yeah. And sit down and eat and fellowship. Yeah. Amen. 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 And 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 thank thank God for his tender mercies. Well, well, that's how we deal with, with the drama. We wrap ourselves up in his 
is compassion. Amen. Amen. Us. Then, and then lastly, um, we, we, we wrap ourselves up in, in, in heaven's goodness. Say amen. amen. See, we, we wrap ourselves up. How, how do you deal with, with, with drama where you wrap yourself up in heaven's goodness? Paul declares, therefore, as the elect of God, look at somebody and say, I'm part of God's elect. See, that straightens your shoulders up. I, I'm somebody. Now, now, not in pride and arrogance, but, but I'm somebody because I, I'm part of God's elect. As the elect of God, uh, holy, yes, beloved, yes, allow his, his, his tender mercies and it, then, then it talks about his kindness. That, that word kindness there really speaks of God's goodness. Now, now it, it's, it's just not any type of, of goodness or kindness. But this is the, the goodness that you can only find in heaven. Say amen. Now, now, now God's goodness in heaven, it can show up on earth because the, the Holy Spirit of God lives in us. And so this is a, a, a goodness and kindness from another origin. Say amen. And, and, and this goodness, since it originates from heaven, it has a moral component to it. It speaks of doing what is right. Amen. Amen. Now, it's very important for us to know that, uh, you know, there's right and there is wrong. Amen. Say amen. amen. That, 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 you know, the, that seems to be blurred nowadays. There is right, uh, there is wrong. There are individuals who run for office. They don't want to deal with moral issues because when you deal with morality, you have to deal with the B-I-B-L-E and you have to deal with the God who is a moral God who establishes moral uh, parameters. And, uh, but yet this, this goodness, it speaks of and about doing what is right, the good, when the drama appears, and what is the good thing, what is the kind thing, what is the morally right thing to do. Say amen. amen. What, what is the moral thing? What would heaven have me to do? How would heaven have me to react when I'm dealing with the trauma? How, how would, what, what does heaven want me to do? Amen. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, heaven might, might want me to say, hey, I'm not dealing with that. Heaven might, might want me to say, listen, I, I do not have a response to that. I'm, I'm not going to go tit for tat. I'm not going to go railing for railing. Evil for evil. Listen, that only makes me even. Amen. Amen. It only makes me even, but uh, forgiveness, and we'll get there in this series, but forgiveness uh, places me above uh, the drum. I don't want to be involved in the drama. I, I want to operate above uh, the drama. We are part of God's uh, elect, and so God, help me to rise above this. Deliver me from me. Amen. And so what is the right thing to do? And that's why we keep an ear open to the Lord's voice when, when we are moving from day to day. What, what, when we are confronted, Lord, what would you have me to do? Be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow and yet to get angry. Oftentimes, first get angry first, say amen. And then they say something they shouldn't say. Then they say, oh, I'm so sorry. And then first say, listen, no, you don't say it. No. <laughs> say amen. Amen. And so the word of God, be swift to hear, so to speak. And when we keep an ear open to the voice of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will always move us, share with us what is right, right. To, right. to do. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And sometimes the right thing just might be, hey, we, 
we can't come to an agreement. But I'm not gonna fall out with you. Say amen. There's not to be no concord here, but I'm not gonna go back and forth. Amen. What what is the right? And that's a God they love. A God they love does what is best and beneficial for the situation, for the setting. Amen. And I heard a professor. Uh, had a professor who would share, well, God's agape love is not, you know, it is, it is, it's not just doobly glop with a cherry on top. Mm -hmm. Where God's kind of love, you love a person and, and then a person just, no, it's not the type of love where you allow others to just run over you. But it's a type of love that does what is best and beneficial for the situation. So sometimes my child would have to be disciplined. Right. Sometimes I can take them to McDonald's when they want to. But sometimes I have to say no. Sometimes I have to make it, uh, the child cut off all of their mediums uh, of uh, media and communication and say, now you need to study. Open your book up and study. Say amen. amen. And so God's kindness does what is right. What, what is right for this situation? What is right for this drama? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're talking about putting a stop. Say putting a stop. Now, now not carrying on and on and on. Had drama on one and then that same drama on uh, yeah, It flows over into Tuesday and then yeah. it flows over into Thursday and Wednesday. Flow, no, we're going to put a stop to it. It's not on Monday and Tuesday is a different day. It's a different day. The, the, the right thing to do, well, the right thing to do is always understand that, that we serve a God who is larger than our God. That we serve a God who can help us in any situation and circumstance. We serve a God if you will allow him. Our God will remind you of who you are. Yes. When you're confronted with the situations in life, re relational issues, issues uh, on the job with an employee, issues in the marketplace, Amen. issues with uh, a friend, so-called uh, friend. The Lord uh, can help us uh, to focus on what is uh, proper. Well, I'm always mindful of the fact, one reason why a smile stays on my face is because no matter how hard and how difficult life may be, I serve a Christ who loves me. And I serve a Christ who just didn't say that I love you. Right. But we serve, I serve, we serve a Christ who demonstrated right. his love for us. Yeah. So the right thing to do is to always allow the Lord to have our mind. Yeah. And if we allow him to have our mind, he can control our emotions. Yeah. And if we allow him to have our mind, he can control our emotions that will ultimately control our reactions and our behavior. And that's called the peace of God that passes all understanding. Doesn't matter what life brings, doesn't matter what life throws at you. You can have peace, yes, in the midst of the storm. It's all that saying that was what Jesus was demonstrating even to his disciples when he was walking on the water, yes, toward the ship in the midst of the storm. Then the disciples saw him, they were afraid, and Jesus declared, don't be afraid, it is I, Peter, declared, well, Lord, if it's you, allow me to walk on the water. Jesus simply said, come. And when Peter stepped off and out of the ship, as long as his focus was on the Lord, he could walk above 
the waters of life. But as soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus, you know, that's an important point. As soon, say, as soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to look at the, the waves of the storm and he began to see, well, thank God that we serve a God even when we take eyes off of him and we are seeking, well, the Lord allows us to cry out to him. Peter cried out to the Lord, Lord, save me. The Lord didn't go back and forth with him. Why did you take your eyes off of me? No, he reached down and picked Peter up. They went and found themselves back on the ship. Jesus spoke to the storm and there was peace all over the place and the disciples declared, well, what man of man is this that he can speak to the wind and speak to the waves and they obey him. Well, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus who will always keep my minds focused on him. Thank God for Jesus who demonstrated his love for us when we were seeking and seeing far from the peace for sure very deeply stained within. We were seeking to rise and no more. We called on the master of the sea. He heard our despairing cry from the waters of despair, from the waters of the drama. Yeah, he lifted us now safe we are in the love that lifted me. It was in love that lifted you well. Oh, 
really don't have time um, to rehearse stuff um, that happened 20 years ago and you're still angry. Um, the Lord has been too good to me. Um, ain't God alright? Um, gonna look at somebody and tell them that he's been real good to me. I don't have time um, to spend time slicing your ties. Um, because you slice mine. Um, ain't God alright? Um, I really don't have time um, to try to get back at you. Um,